In today's video, you're going to learn everything you need to know regarding higher order functions within JavaScript. We're first going to talk about what is a higher order function, and then we're going to focus on some examples of them and why they're useful. As I, I think conceptually, higher order functions aren't necessarily incredibly difficult to wrap your head around, but I think what was more difficult for me is understanding like when I might actually want to use a higher order function and how these are useful and why am I even learning this? So let's first start off with what is a higher order function. And a higher order function is a function that will take another function into its parameter. So it accepts another function as a argument, or it's a function that returns another function. So the two criteria that make a higher order function is it is a function that either receives a function as an argument or it returns a function. So a way of thinking of this is a higher order function has multiple levels of functions. It in of itself is a function, and then it either takes a function as an argument or it returns a function. And the reason that you can do this is because in JavaScript, functions can be passed around as just like there are any other value within your program. Functions are considered first class citizens and they can be passed around. Now you're actually kind of passing a reference to that function around, but that's how it can be thought of. You can pass functions around in your program, meaning you can return functions out of other functions and pass them in to other functions. So what's an example of what this kind of looks like here? Well, in just this very kind of simple example, in this function labeled takes a function, it defines a function in its parameters here. And often when you pass a function into another function, that is going to be called a callback function. So a callback function is passed into another function. And that allows you to call that function at some later date, hence a callback function. And then here, this is a function that returns another function. So both of these examples, these would be higher order functions because this one accepts a function and then calls it right here. And then this one returns its own function. Now, why are these useful? Why are these important to learn? Well, for one, it can make your code more readable. So if I dive a little bit further into this example here, I have an array called the numbers with the numbers one through 10 in it. And then on line 33, I have a empty array called numbers times 10. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to effectively loop over this array and multiply each number by 10. And then I'm gonna create a new array and push those numbers into that new array. So it's basically gonna have me create a new array of all of these numbers in my initial array times 10. So here you can see that I write this for loop here, and then I'm gonna count to log my return value here. So let me run this program here, and you can see that I do indeed get each value of this array multiplied by 10. As I just loop over this array, and to my new array, I push the number times 10. So you know this, this isn't particularly like super unreadable. You can figure out what's going on here, but I feel as though anytime you write loops within your program, you do kind of have to think about, okay, on each iteration of this loop, what am I going to be doing? And if you have more complex logic here, it can just lead to a lot of mental overhead trying to think about what is going on within each iteration of this loop. And it can be a little bit tricky at times. So what I think is potentially more useful is instead of just writing a basic loop over this, what we can do is we can use a higher order function that will basically create a new array and allow us to just pass in some instructions to perform on that array and get the same result instead of needing to write this for loop here. So let's go with a different approach here. So let me comment the for loop out. And here on line 41, I'm actually going to create a function called multiply by 10. It takes one number as an argument and returns that number multiply by 10. And then here on line 46, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the map method in JavaScript, which is an array method. If you haven't seen my videos on map, filter, reduce, and some of those higher order functions, I think it would be useful to at least have an idea of how map works before maybe continuing on with this video. But all of those methods are higher order functions in which map will take a function as a callback function. So it takes a function as an argument here. And then what it's going to do, it's going to pass each number of this array into this callback function. 
and map will create a brand new array and it will manipulate each value in that array based on what function you pass in. So here, you're gonna see that I actually get the very same result here as what I did earlier. I get the numbers multiplied by 10, but to me, this is much more readable. All I do is call numbers.map and I pass in instructions. And when I am looking through a code base and I'm reading a code base and I land on line 46 and I have to read, okay, my variable is equal to numbers.map multiply by 10. Well, this is pretty self-descriptive in that, okay, I'm just going to multiply all my numbers by 10. This likely leads to my numbers multiplied by 10. Whereas in the for loop, you still kind of have to like enter the for loop in, in your mind and think about what's happening on each iteration. And then it's like, okay, I'm pushing this to the array. So by using this higher order function here, it allows you to just pass in some instructions, which is very readable in my opinion. And you, you also can kind of abstract out. I don't have to think about how map is creating a new array and the map function is likely iterating over that array and performing some instructions on the array. I don't have to think about that. All I have to do is look at this. Okay, we're mapping over this array and multiplying each number by 10. Quite readable in my opinion. So that is one benefit of using higher order functions. And keep in mind that the map filter reduce methods and some other array methods within JavaScript, those are all considered higher order functions because they take a callback as an argument. Now, it also prevents you from repeating yourself quite a bit. And front end masters, it's they have a lot of courses on there. I'm going to give them a shout out here because there's a great video on there kind of explaining higher order functions and stuff that really helped me in my learning when I was just starting out. So I definitely think that this is a good resource for front end developers. So feel free to check them out. I just wanted to, you know, give credit where it's due. But here you're going to see that what I'm going to do here is give you an example of me repeating myself and then how you can fix that with higher order functions. So I have a function copy array and multiply by two. It takes an array, it creates a brand new array, it iterates over the array that's passed in, and it multiplies each number by two. And then it's going to return the new array. So this is very similar to what I was doing here. I'm basically just iterating over an array, multiplying each number, and then returning a new array with each number multiplied by two. In. Now, what if I wanted to do a similar thing, but I wanted to copy an array and then multiply each value by three? Well, I would basically write the same exact function here, but instead of just multiplying by two, I would multiply by three. And then as you can see with these functions, I'm repeating almost every single line of code except for this one here. Well, really, except for this value right here. I'm copying this logic here. I'm copying the logic of my for loop and returning the array. All of these are the same, but performing this dif different operation, I created a whole new function for that, which you can see I'm repeating myself quite a bit here. Now, if I just run this program and log these out here, the return value of copying my numbers array and multiplying it by those numbers, you can see that I get one array where every number is multiplied by two and another array where every number is multiplied by three. So, you know, it works, but we do repeat ourselves quite a bit. So what if I actually just wrote a function called copy array and manipulate? And maybe that function could just take another function in which I pass in some instructions to perform on this array. And if you're kind of putting this together now, basically what we're doing here is we are re-implementing how the map method works within JavaScript. The map method is a method that just copies array and manipulates it in some way. And you pass in an array and some instructions to perform on that array within the map method. So we're gonna recreate that here and kind of show you why it is a bit more readable and why it prevents repeating yourself. But let me just comment out kind of what I had above and kind of go through this. So I create a general function here in which I take an array and some instructions. And these instructions are gonna be a function. And I'm gonna define a new array. I'm gonna iterate over the passed in array. And then up to my new array, I'm going to push the return value of passing every number of this array into my instructions callback function. So I'm gonna perform these instructions on every number in the array 
push it into my new array, and then return my new array out. And then here, I define two different functions. Multiply by two takes a number, multiplies it by two, and then another function, multiply by three, that takes a number and returns that number times three. And if I run these functions here, you're gonna see that I get the very same result. I get an array with every number multiplied by two and an array with every number multiplied by three because I call my copy array and manipulate function and then I just pass in my array and then the multiply by two function. And this kind of prevents us from needing to rewrite all of this logic within the body of this function. I only have to write this logic once and then I pass in these instructions here. Now, we could actually make this even more dynamic and more readable by using higher order functions. So instead of creating these two functions here, multiply by two and multiply by three, that basically do the same thing. The only difference is the multiplier here or the factor here. Well, what if I just created a function called create multiply function and this function here, it takes a factor. So it, it takes a number that I want to multiply each number by. And what it's gonna do is it's gonna return a function multiplying a number by the initial factor here. So here, instead of passing in a multiply by two function, I can actually call the create multiply function and pass in a factor. And I'm gonna pass in two. And what this is going to evaluate to is actually going to be a function. It's going to return a function here that is gonna take a number and it's going to multiply it by the initial factor that I pass in. So it's going to multiply it by two. And then here, if I want to do the same thing, but multiply it by three, well, I can just pass this into my higher order function or pass three into my create multiply function. That is a higher order function. And that's going to return a function that multiplies every number by three. And if I count to log my numbers by two and numbers by three, you're going to see I get the very same result here. And this is a good example of using higher order functions to keep yourself from repeating yourself. Because here you can see, I just have a copy array and manipulate function. And then I just have another higher order function that will create a multiplier function. And that prevents me from needing to repeat kind of this logic of multiplying a number by a certain factor and then also keeps me from repeating these for loops and creating a new array and returning that array. I only have to write the logic one time here. All right, and both of these are higher order functions. So hopefully that gives you an example of how it can kind of allow you to prevent yourself from repeating yourself. And if you're not repeating yourself, that means that when bugs come up, it's going to make it easier to debug because say I had a flaw in my logic there which unfortunately happens from time to time, I only have to change that in one place. So say I, I accidentally put a divide symbol here instead of multiply, that would, you know, I mean, I've made dumb mistakes before in programming, so it, I wouldn't put it past me. But say I did that, well, I only have to change that in this one function here. I wouldn't have to go into my multiply by two function and then my multiply by three function to then go change that. So this is definitely going to help using these higher order functions is going to help you keep your code more dry or keep you from repeating yourself. Now, it also allows you to customize functions and then return that customized function. So it allows you to basically create a wrapper around a function and then still return a function, but just with some customized logic. And this is actually very common to do within React components in which you might create a wrapper component around some other component, customize that component just a little bit. Maybe that component's from a library and you have less control over it. So you just need to create a wrapper around it to customize the logic for your own use case. And this will be higher order components in React because in React, components are just functions and React is just JavaScript. So this concept of higher order functions works very well and definitely applies to React. So here, and I already kind of talked about this note here that a passed in function is called the callback function. So we won't belabor that point here, 
But what I do is I create a function and it's called Onceify. I have no idea if this is how you would spell Onceify, but just bear with me. And it takes a function as an argument here. And what it's going to do is it's going to return a function that can only be called once. So we are going to Onceify this passed in function. And in within the body of my outer function, Onceify, I define a variable called count. And I first assign it to zero. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to return a function. And I'm going to first check, is my count equal to zero? If that's true, I'm going to then increment my count because I'm going to call my callback function. And then I'm going to return calling my callback. So I'm going to just return whatever my callback function returns here. But that's only going to happen if my count is equal to zero. If my count's not equal to zero, I'm going to say this function can only be called once. So once a phi is a higher order function that takes a function, it will first check if we've called that function yet. If we haven't called that function, it's going to go ahead and call it. But if we have called it, it's going to tell us that we can only call it once. So I'm going to create a function here called say hello, and it just returns the string value hello. And then I'm going to create another function here called say hello once. And this is going to be the return value of passing in say hello to Onceify. So I'm calling Onceify. I'm passing in my say hello function here as my callback. And if I haven't called it before, it's going to return whatever say hello returns. But if I have called it, it's just going to return this function can only be called once. So let's console log the return value of calling the say hello function three separate times here. And when I run this, you can see the first time I get hello, the return value of say hello. But the second and third time I get this function can only be called once. So here I've used a higher order function to customize this function here and turn it into a function that just returns hello once. And I didn't need to manipulate this function in any way. I just created a wrapper around that function to customize its logic. So these higher order functions can be used as wrappers around other functions to customize some logic, which it might not be like extremely evident here. Like when would you ever use a onceify function? I mean, you there might be a use case for it, but it's more so to the concept that as you're going within your programming career, you're going to come on to situations in which it's like, okay, I don't really want to change this current function here because maybe you're using it in a lot of other places in your program and you're not sure the effects it'll have. Or maybe that function comes from a library and you literally can't change it. Well, you might write, write a wrapper function around it to customize the logic in some way and then still kind of use that function within your overall higher order function. All right. Now, also, higher order functions allow you to do kind of more complex things within one single function. So by passing functions into another function, you can just have like one core function that calls other functions, making your functions a lot more reusable and a lot more readable and just a bit more clean. So here, I'm not going to have like a specific return value here. This is just kind of for the sake of example. But here I have a function called handle survey completed. And it takes kind of five different arguments. It takes a get user, and this is going to be a function. It takes a survey ID. It takes a get survey function. So another callback function. It takes another function called mark survey complete. And then at the end, it's going to take a function to send the completed surveys to the database. And then within the body of this function, you can see I'm going to use the get user function to get my user. I'm going to use the get survey function and the survey ID to get a survey. And then I'm going to mark the surveys completed with the survey ID by calling this function here. And then finally, I'm going to send the completed surveys to the database using the user ID and the survey. So in this handle completed surveys function, this might be a function that you call when someone completed a certain action within your program here, when someone completed a survey. And if there's a lot of logic that you want to perform when someone completes a survey, which there very well could be, well, you could write just a handle survey function, one single function 
that actually uses several other functions. And it makes this super readable. Like if I'm a programmer and I want to know what happens when a user completes a survey, well, I can read this function very easily and just be like, okay, well, we get the user, we get a survey, we mark the survey completed, and then we send that completed survey data to our database. Like that is very easy to read. I can know what's going on at just a glance here. But if I wrote all of this get user logic, all of the get survey logic, all of the mark survey logic, all of this within one single function, that would probably make this really, really difficult to reason about and a lot less readable. So by passing these functions into this higher order function, it allows me to have a much more readable and less complex function and just kind of call out to those other functions based on the functions I pass in here. All right, so hopefully that gives you an example of how higher order functions can also kind of simplify your functions as well and make things even, even more readable like we touched on earlier. So there's likely several other use cases of higher order functions, but hopefully these kind of these four different examples here kind of give you some use cases of where they're beneficial. So a higher order function is a function that accepts another function as a parameter, or it's a function that returns another function. So there's multiple levels of function. It's a function itself, and it either takes a function as a parameter or it returns a function. And this is all possible because JavaScript treats functions like values as first class citizens, and you can pass these functions all around your program. And it's gonna help you make your code more readable. It's gonna help prevent you from repeating yourself throughout your program. It's going to allow you to create wrapper functions and just kind of customize logic of specific functions. And then it's also gonna allow you to simplify functions and break complex functions down into just a function that uses other function calls and something that is more simple and easy to reason about. So hopefully this helps you understand higher order functions and you took something away from it. So thanks for tuning in and I'll see you in that next one.